Well, welcome back to this episode of Batavia Spotlight. And I'm very, very happy to be the hostess today to Eric Dom of Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Southern Kane and Kendall Counties. Thanks for having me on the show today, Alan. Thank you for being here, Eric. Uh, tell us a little bit about your organization. Okay, well, um, Big Brothers Big Sisters is a national organization. We've been around since 1904, but locally we've been in Aurora serving Southern Kane and Kendall Counties since 1980. So we are a part of um, a bigger nonprofit in the area called Family Counseling Service, and Family Counseling Service is actually celebrating its 90th anniversary this year. So. We're uh, pretty excited about that, but um, our program is a pretty simple idea. It's about mentoring. It's about building a friendship between an adult volunteer who wants to give back and give some of their time with a child in the program who could really benefit from having someone who can give them some positive, individual, fun attention. And tell us about the children that are in the program. Okay. Well, most are from single parent families, although not all. Um, usually the kids come to the program, they, the parent might hear about it from their school, from their church, from a social worker, someone who's trying to help them find some extra resources. But the kids in the program are usually age 6 through 12, and they're kids who want to be there. Um, all the kids in the program want to have that kind of positive relationship. So none of our, our volunteers are forced into doing this. They're all volunteering. None of the kids are really dragging their feet. They are interested in having that kind of fun, positive relationship with the big brothers and big sisters that we have in the program. And tell us a little bit about what does it take to be a big brother or a big sister? What are you looking for in somebody? It's pretty simple. Um, our volunteers end up spending a couple hours a month with their littles. They usually get with, together with their little about every other week. So when they spend time together, they could be going to a park, going to the library, um, focusing on school, maybe focusing on just playing some games and learning some social skills, some real basic stuff. But again, we want the relationship to be about fun. So we try and match people based on their interests. So if some uh, big comes to me and says, I really love sports, I would love to go play catch at the park, then we want to try and find a little who's going to be interested in the same thing so that they have a solid foundation for their relationship. So we match people very carefully based on the preferences that the volunteer might have for their interests or their hobbies and what a parent or child is interested in as well. And what is the commitment that a, a, a big brother or big sister would need to make? We ask for at least a year-long commitment with our volunteers. Uh, we believe that it takes some time to really establish a quality relationship. And so even though it's only a few hours each month, it does need to be consistent. Otherwise, you're not going to be really establishing um, a true lasting friendship, which is what our program is all about. So the, pr uh, the commitment is really um, just to be there for that child for at least a year, though we hope a lot of our matches last longer. One of our uh, oldest matches has been matched for eight years, actually. The little sister started when she was in fourth grade. This year she's graduating high school with her big sister. So um, their match will be complete now that she's 18 and she's graduating, but they've had a lot of great years together and really established a lifelong friendship, which is ultimately our goal for any match that comes in. You'd mentioned that there's a waiting list for your services? There is. We unfortunately have a waiting list right now with um, about 20 little brothers and little sisters on it. Um, we have definitely a bigger need for male volunteers, as I mentioned, and right now most of that waiting list is little brothers. So we're really hoping this year that we can make a big push, recruit all the volunteers we need to completely eliminate that waiting list so that next time a child comes into the program and says, I could benefit from having a positive role model, we can say, all right, we, we have people ready to go who we think are going to be a good match with you. Let's get you started, as opposed to saying, thanks for coming in, let's do our interview and get to know you, and then see how things go. We'd really like to be able to make that a faster process so that we can help more kids in the program and, and do it more efficiently. How long does somebody usually stay on your waiting list? Um, right now we have matches or littles who have been there waiting for a big brother for um, over a year. Oh. And so it's been, it's, it's been uh, a big challenge for us and we've, we've shrunk our waiting list. Uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, we were at about 30 littles and now we're down to about 15 or 20. So we are making some progress with that and again we hope that we have a really strong year and mm -hmm. that we're able to um, take that completely away. Tell me, how did you get started with the organization? I got started five years ago. I was originally in AmeriCorps VISTA, and AmeriCorps is a domestic service program. So we, there are volunteers who are working um, full-time. They are paid a very, very little bit, <laughs> and at the end of the year, there's an education award, meaning that they're given um, the equivalent of a Pell Grant to use towards existing or future loans they have. So I started as an AmeriCorps volunteer, 
and worked with Big Brothers Big Sisters in that capacity for a year. When I finished my year of service, I was lucky enough to be hired on, um, and I was running the school-based program for a long time um, with the high school volunteers at the elementary schools. And now I actually run the entire Big Brothers Big Sisters program at the agency. How is it funded? How is Big Brothers and the Big Sisters funded? We're almost exclusively funded from support from communities and individuals, businesses who are committing to help us out. There's no fee for any of the kids in the program. Um, there's only a very small fee for a volunteer to help us cover the cost of their background checks when they first get started. Mm -hmm. So there's no cost to any of the people um, who are participating unless, of course, they want to go out for ice cream or go see a movie. Uh -huh. um, but so one of our biggest fundraisers throughout the year is called Bowl for Kids Sake. We do that annually. We try and get a lot of people to come out who are supporting the program, raising money and raising awareness. And then to celebrate, we have a big bowling party. I actually brought one of the, the shirts from this year's event. It was a superhero theme because all the big brothers and big sisters in our program are superheroes. Excellent. So here you can see our pretty awesome t-shirt with a logo that may or may not resemble Superman. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was a great event. We actually um, raised a lot of money this year and, and that's where the majority of our our budget comes from. So, you know what? You can keep this shirt. Why, thank you. You just hang on to that now. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's going to look great on you. I like it. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. My goodness. You're welcome. So, how can somebody learn more and find out if this is something that they want to get involved with? There's more information on our website. That's probably one of the easiest ways to get involved. They can always give us a call as well. Um, but if you just look up our information, um, you're going to find out a lot more about the ways you can get involved and the first steps you can take if you're interested in enrolling a child or if you're interested in becoming a volunteer. And what is your website? Our website is on my little sheet here. It is www.aurorafcs.org. Um, that's, again, kind of the entire agency, um, but there'll be a link there to more specific information about Big Brothers Big Sisters, but also to the other programs that the agency offers, like um, counseling, working with individuals and families and children. And so if people are interested in more behavioral health, um, and they, can, they can stop by and learn more about things there. But you'll find information um, at that website, again, www.aurorafcs.org. Any final words from you before we say goodbye? Um, no, I'm just, I'm really excited to kind of um, be getting involved in Batavia. It's part of our service area. We really want to make sure that we're covering all of the um, neighborhoods that we encompass, all the communities to get involved and really pull together to make sure that we have all a mentor for every kid who needs one. So you're open to any child that needs a mentor. You're mm -hmm. open to adults who want to mentor and serve mm -hmm. children. Yep. Anyone who's interested in more info, please give us a call or check us out on the website and we can, we can figure it out from there. Well, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. It was great to be here. Thank you so much. And very many thanks to Eric for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. We're looking forward to hearing more from them.